I really should fix that. I should do a lot of things. Hard rock. But then I just say something stupid, and then that ends up being the beginning blurb. Probably like this will be the beginning blurb. <laughs> Hard rock. I'm pretty adult. Like I'm a I'm I'm like post adult, like maximum adult. Hard rock. I'm eight minutes in. I've already done the blurb twice. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Oh, I, I missed the applause button. I'm not awesome. Hard rock lunch box. Uh, what is up, everybody? It is time for another edition of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. Yeah, that's right. It's Thursday, I think. Open. And, uh, yeah, this is what we do kind of every Thursday at noon here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm wearing my Taking Back Sunday shirt that is old enough. You can barely see that it's still Taking Back Sunday. And uh, as I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror on the way down here, I realized that, oh, that's why you never see fat kids wearing emo shirts. Yeah, because I look ridiculous in it. But I've cut the sleeves off. Therefore, it is my official uniform of the springtime edition of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. That's me. Just want to start with a little, uh, oh, I got fuzzy there for a second. How you doing, camera? <laughs> Logitech still just messing with me because it can, I guess. Uh, just a little housekeeping. I was successfully, for the first time, I was successfully able to uh, boost a Hard Rock Lunchbox Top 20 post. Yeah, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> to be fair, I only spent $5 on it because I wanted to see what would happen. I did, I did check the stats this morning. Uh, and while it's funny because whenever I just post the top 20 from the Hard Rock Lunchbox page, what I usually get is like two engagements and no clicks. Uh, I got like 650 engagements and four clicks. Yeah, right. totally worth it. <laughs> I'm going to let that roll for a little while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and advertise as many of these things as I can, and then we'll just... We'll kind of see what it does. Like, I want to bring people into the show. I want to bring people onto Stranger TV because I think there's good quality content, and that's kind of like what we're all doing there. Like, I, I honestly, if I knew what it took to build a channel, I think I would have done it already. So clearly, it should be clear to everybody that I'm just guessing just as much as everybody else, I suppose. And or like, I don't, I don't. Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of winging it. So as always, if you have any ideas, hop up on the chat. Ninety nine. 90, 99 99 <laughs> Sound like a crazy Eddie commercial. Uh, 99 WNRR will get you right into the live chat. And of course, you can always reach us at hardrocklunchbox uh, at gmail.com. And as always, any complaints, go over to our complaint department over at Monty at cravingstrange.net. Thank you very much. What else we got going on in Strangerhood TV? So there is a brand new Top 20 out today, of course. This is the one where I talk about uh, how I can't believe it. everyone's pretending that they didn't see uh, what the, the the overturn of Roe v. Wade coming, because uh, I saw it coming, and I wasn't even really looking at it. I mean, like like I said in the in the show, like it's the stated goal of the conservative majority. That's exactly what they said they wanted to do. And you could tell, by the way, they wouldn't answer those questions directly at the confirmation hearing. It's exactly what they wanted to do, and so they did it. Like, and honestly, kudos to them for saying something, and you know, that's what they were going to do. And and normally with, with most political parties, right, both sides, it's not what they say, just, you know, it's not it's not what it's not watch what they say, watch what they do. Unlike the top twenty, where you really should watch what I say and don't really give a shit about what I do. Like that's what I would do. But um, you know, it's important to kind of just pay attention. But like in this particular case, like that's what they said. They were appointing conservative justices because they wanted to could they want to be more conservative with basically what your rights are. Like it's right in the name, conservative. Like it's not just fiscally conservative; it's social, socially and liberally conservative as well. Like your rights. And uh, as I started to say last week, there is no 
there, there's there's a there's like a little tiny window of the Supreme Court where they were actually protecting or enhancing rights, and unfortunately, that was the time that I grew up learning about the, the Supreme Court um, because those were the most recent big decisions. That's uh, you know, like I talked about it last week, like Griswold versus Connecticut, Roe versus Wade, Casey versus Planned Parenthood, and stuff like that. These are things that actually enshrined civil rights, and the Supreme Court has a history of not doing that. And if you're thinking about conservative justices on the Supreme Court, the conservative is that they're not expanding your rights. Like, conservation goes that way. So, no one should be surprised, and I'm actually a little surprised that people are surprised by it. But anyway, so I talk about that. I talk a little bit about dogma and stuff, which I'm going to talk about again today. Um, And I talk about, like, the difference between us and a direct democracy and why all that other stuff and blah, 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 blah. But uh, there is other stuff going on on Strangerhood TV, as always. Um, you can check out uh, the full interview with the band High Wind, and you can check out Seven Questions. Apparently, they doubled up again because I think the guys over at Bacon's My Podcast have no idea that it's no longer April. I don't know that that's the deal, but they've got Jake Gordon from Orgy, and they got Glacier Baines or Band. Okay, so they have seven questions from each of those, which, like, honestly, don't tell them, but it's like 14 questions at that point. So just some basic math. So I don't know what's going on, on over at Bacon's My Podcast, but. They're definitely doubling down, doubling up, and doubling over uh, on the seven questions again. So maybe they have a problem. Maybe they don't. Maybe they need help. Maybe they need someone to talk to. I don't know. Might have a slight seven question addiction. I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh, I've got shows coming up. I think Craving Strange announced the 89 North show already. I think I saw the announcement video for that. Uh, if they didn't say it on there, uh, Rebel 9 is going to be a part of that show as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're working on a show also in Queens. I'm just waiting on the final lineups. I will let you know about that. And, of course, uh, June 25th. Uh, is going to be like our big special night and I think I could talk more about that today so I will talk about that a little later Uh, and uh, yeah man let's get into the top 20 Uh, it's nice to see the chat filling up all right hello everybody in the chat I do I I do remember when they added the ability to just sort of log in on whatever name you wanted to add in. Like, you can log in as a guest and then type in your name like a lot of other um, chat rooms and stuff like that. And I really do appreciate sometimes the extra <laughs> extra effort that goes into people's names. I don't have that kind of time. Like, <laughs> I, I was actually the first one here today, which, when I tell you that never happens, like, never happens. And what is going on with my hair right there? Why is it sticking through? This goes on, like, at least once. Well, I was going to say at least once a month, but it's, like, got to be, like, every show. Cut my goddamn hair not all that long ago, and for some reason it just grew back. And I guess I should stop complaining because of all the th- all the problems I seem to have, like that's not one of them. So like, let's knock on some wood. Yeah, knock, 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 knock. And uh, boy, that compressor really just kicked in right there, huh? I should probably drop that. I really should fix that. I should do a lot of things. <laughs> I think I just found my opening clip. <laughs> Oh man, it's funny. I uh, every week when I post the top twenty, I just kind of like try and figure out like what that opening blurb should be. And for some reason, there's just always something self-deprecating. <laughs> like, and sometimes there's like a really important beginning that would be like a really good lead-in. But then I just say something stupid, and then that ends up being the beginning blurb. Probably like this will be the beginning blurb. <laughs> like, anyway. What do I know? I'm eight minutes in. I've already done the blurb twice. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Oh, I, I missed the applause button. I'm not awesome. Um, so I, I didn't really have anything specific to talk about. I do want to talk about this dogma thing because it's kind of important. But then something else sort of just struck me recently. And I have not had a chance to run this by my normal um, check. <laughs> I guess, like, everybody has, like, a group of people, right? Like, you can run stuff by and be like, dude, am I completely insane or is this actually just sort of happening, right? So I have that for different things, um, you know, that go on in the world and stuff like that. And I have not run this by I have not run this by that particular group. And I'm trying to figure out, like, I, I'm in this weird situation. Like, okay, so we're, we're going to play the Craving Train show um, on July 8th. Uh, 89 North and that's awesome like I love playing with those guys and Jimmy asked me if we'd play with him and I was like cool let me just check it out we went back and forth a little bit about some things 
They're like, yeah, man, thanks. And I, uh, yeah, and we're gonna, we're gonna do it. And you know, um, I, I really do just appreciate being asked. Like as simple as that sounds, like I appreciate being asked to do something. Like it's like it, you can advance it into like, you know, it's nice to be included, and it's like, yes, I want to be a part of those things. But like, I guess the very first part of it is. It's it's nice to be asked, and I think I've spent a lot of time in bands, kind of cultivating like whatever, whatever sort of following or whatever that the band has. But like, also like the want to work with us kind of aspect. Like I've got bands like all over the country that I think I, th- I thought I thought we could just up and play with. Like if we were ever like kind of in the area. Like I feel like we have really good relationships with bands, and um. I do, and I definitely have good relationships with bands around here. I just, I've, I've had a weird batch of not being asked to do things lately after being kind of asked to do them initially. <laughs> like, this is now, I'm now up to my very third band recently uh, that was like, yeah, we definitely want you to be a part of something. <clears throat> and then when the something happens, nothing. Not a message, not a phone call, not nothing. And I absolutely 100% get in my head about stuff like that. I, I get in my head about stuff like that a lot more than I used to because I it's it's not that it's not that I like to be like you know all ignorance is bliss and stuff like that, but like sometimes being a little aloof and and not getting bogged down in the details and the minutia of things is a much healthier way to be. And it and it kind of like I don't work. I don't work in an office, right? I haven't worked in an office like like the office office. I haven't worked in one of those, uh, I guess, since ever, right? Like, I've never really had that kind of job. I work in them in the sense that, like, I will go to them from time to time and uh, as, a, like, a support contractor kind of thing, right? Like, I set up networks, networks and software, and I go in for meetings. And a lot of times, like, I have companies that I know well, uh, that I've been, you know, a part of, like, you know, I have my biggest account is in North Carolina. Like when I go there, I sit there for like a week and I, and I'm actually like an at desk employee. Um, but you know, like you just, you hear little bits and pieces, like when you're involved in stuff like that. And in the virtual era, like more people are familiar with that, but that existence has been most of my existence as an employee. So I've never really had, uh, that or the training to be involved in like office politics or office drama. Um, I also tend, uh, I guess historically, have tended to sort of not notice when people are just screwing me over or stabbing me in the back or stuff, um, because I tend to have my own relationships with people, and as long as the front-facing relationship of that is what I'm expecting of it, I'm not really looking for the backstabbing. Like I just, like I don't, like I don't know, like I don't, I don't, I don't feel like people are like going out of their way to to screw me over like I feel like th- and maybe it's a self-deprecating thing but like I honestly don't think I'm worth the trouble of going through all that and you know like when when a lot of the shit went down with like uh, LTOB and I kind of found out what was really happening behind the scenes I was I was really shocked because like not only had I not known it <laughs> like um, I didn't see it coming because there and and even when it did come like I still saw I guess I, st- I saw I saw no logic to it right like there were just it didn't make any sense and you know we've been treated badly uh, we've been treated quite badly by, by several bands over the years um, I know that uh, uh, Face the King had black all but blackballed us or blacklisted us from a couple of shows um and i don't even remember what the reason was um there was something there was there was there was something but i remember even talking to joey about it like years later and he was like yeah man and that's why we don't invite you on any shows and i was like what did you just say (laughs) like (laughs) like now, to be fair, and in Joey's defense, years after that, like he actually apologized, basically for being such a douche all the entire time he was in Face the King, and I, you know, re- truly respected that. Like I thought that was, I thought that was a big deal to actually take time out of your day to to say that kind of stuff because I think it was right. So, um, but it's it just it's not representative of like the only time that's ever happened. Like, and it's and it's weird. Like it's. 
I guess I guess in a band band way, it's like being dumped for the prettier girl. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Like I watched a lot of '80s movies, right? Like so, I kind of know like that formula, uh, and and that's just kind of like what it always felt like. But it was funny because whenever like I would talk those things out with people, like people like I respected and trusted and stuff like that, like. The funny thing on it is that it never seems to really make a difference. Like, it doesn't do anything for anybody to do that. Like, what it does, in my less than extensive experience, what it seems to do is every time that happens to me personally and my band specifically, it feels like just a little Jenga block gets pulled out of whatever foundation or fortress or whatever we were kind of working on because it's clearly... A situation where it's like I've lost something that I thought I could inherently trust, and that—that's kind of a weird thing, right? Like it's—it's—it's it's, it's a weird—it's a weird place to be in because, like, when you think of like, when I think of like bands I want to play with and stuff like, like I don't really kind of go through the scorecard of like, oh yeah, they didn't do this, they didn't do this, they didn't do this, but we did that. Like I just don't like. I really kind of think like, what bands could we play with? Like I had mentioned it at the time, but when we were um, when we were doing the Village Pub show. Uh, I was going to add a fourth band to it. Um, I was talking to, to TC, who owns it, and she was like, why don't we just keep it at three? It was very, you know, post-COVID and stuff like that. Like, let's just keep it three. And there's absolutely no way that we could have um, not added a fourth band time-wise. It would have been just fine, and the audience would have been, would have been fine. But, like, I was, I was going to ask um, Eddie from my Ignite to and a farewell fire to basically pick one of those two bands and come play with us because I thought it's really been quite long enough that we haven't played together and it's stupid reasons that we don't and I like even though Eddie and I see things differently on a couple of things and I'm not actually sure what straw broke that particular camel's back um, but you know we don't we don't speak I I talk to Eddie's <laughs> Eddie's dad often enough because Sam and I see things eye to eye um, but. And I talk to his bandmates, like I talk to, you know, Stefan and Corey uh, on occasion and stuff like that. And, of course, I talk to Joey, uh, who I guess is still in. I, I can't even keep track. <laughs> and that, that's not a slam. Please don't take any offense to that at all. I just, I, I really cannot keep track all the time. Um, but I, you know, wanted him to be, like, just pick a band and just, like, get up on stage with us. Like, like, let's kind of do that. Like, because that seems more important to me like it, it just does and it's funny too because like in the converse like when that's done to me like i remember saying to uh jimmy when they asked us about uh the 89 north show and i was like you know we just played stereo garden and didn't draw particularly well um that i mean but we did we did we outdrew the the headliner as far as i could tell uh from from the actual ticket sales and the people is still in the room at the time but like it um, I said to him, I was like, I don't, I don't know. It could fare we really well because a lot of people did couldn't make the last show in Patch Ox, so they'll make this new show. But the reality is, my band's from Long Beach, right? Like that's like an hour and a half. It's easier for us to draw into Jersey at that point than my guys to draw from there. And um, the the irony, I suppose, is is that any sort of Eastern Long Island fan base that I have is already going to go. Oh, to the show because Craving Strange is playing so I was like I'm not really going to add anything in terms of people and seats but I will add value to it and Jimmy in typical Jimmy fashion was like yeah man that's what all, all I really want like it'll definitely enhance and make the product more attractive so somebody was on the fence about going all the way to Patchogue to see one band or the other be like well I'm going to go see both because they're playing there like that's that's been a lot of what uh, Craving Strange and Rebel 9 has done over the years it's not really about um well, it's definitely about us having fun on stage, but as far as the fan and the consumer, it's always about the value add. Like, we're not doubling the price because there's two bands on there. If there's, but you know, if you're like, I don't really want to go out tonight. Oh, both of them are playing for ten bucks or twelve bucks or fifteen bucks or whatever the hell it is. Like, I always thought that was a much bigger value add. And I remember like doing one show at Revolution. It was like five bands that like. Pretty much, if you pulled anybody in the audience, they were all friends of it, and we were just selling it as like, yeah, it's basically two dollars a band, and like, where the hell else are you gonna find that deal? <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I was gonna say something. But oh yeah, so over the course of the you know past recent whatever, uh, I've had three situations in which bands have specifically said to me, it's like, yeah, we're gonna do this thing, we definitely want you on it, and then when it comes up. 
it's just it's nothing but crickets and i i am literally trying to process that process that out i know things are a little bit different in the post covid world and that's fine because they are uh, and I understand that. And if you are looking for, you know, substantial draw in certain places over, I don't know, but like like I said, with, with craving, like a value add, um, then I understand that, too. I just I, I don't understand why it's not warranted warranting a conversation like don't have the first conversation. Right. Like if you never said, like, we want you on this. Like, I wouldn't be like, cool, I'm expecting to be on this. Or, you know, like in one of these cases, I actually marked the calendar. It's like, it's going to be around here at one point. And then the date, like, kind of came and went. And the announcement was like up. And it was like, uh, you know. And only one of them did I actually bring up to the person. And I just got a completely unsatisfactory answer, which was like, yeah, well, you know, it just didn't work out. I'm like, that's still a message, man. It's, it's like, you said we wanted you to do this. And... You know, sending me crickets is it's not it's not really cold. <laughs> like in my in my opinion. Like I mean I understand like if you're like, Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely get coffee one day, like that's that's fine. Like I mean that's that's you know, it's 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 not a you know, expected thing, right? Like it's like oh yeah, we want you for a CD release. It's like okay, that sounds awesome, I'd love to do that. Like, oh cool, there, there goes the C D release. It's so weird, like Totally not on that bill. Like, and honestly, like I can't even do all of them, so it doesn't really, it doesn't matter in the long run. But like for me personally, because I'm just like slightly a mental case about that kind of stuff, like I'm just burying that insult right here because that's where I feel those things. Like I, that's how I'm wired, and I'm sorry if anyone takes offense to it. It's not about you; it's about me. Like this is completely about the way that I process things, and that's that's a big thing about life, right? And understanding like social situations and how social things work, and like if you're a fan of the Four Agreements, like that's the whole thing like it's never it's never really about like the other people it's about how like this person is processing whatever and in this particular case i it's me i am that person and i am not processing it properly like i really should be like yeah man that's that's cool that's fine and i would be i think if i've got some sort of explanation or answer but again when you're just laying in bed at 4 30 in the morning because i guess that's what you do these days you're just like why the hell did that go down that way and i just don't have an answer and a lot of times i just need an explanation like just an explanation would be would be just fine I, and a real one like a real honest one like i'm 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 pretty adult like i'm a i'm i'm like post adult like maximum adult at this point like i really can't handle this whether or not i like it or not is something completely irrelevant but i very rarely hold grudges against people for like truly being honest with me like well yep i understand that i don't like it but like you know once i understand something i feel like i can move on it's the not understanding and me having to fill in all those blanks that are the worst because i again am just totally crazy when it comes comes to that kind of stuff and i will fill in all those blanks so I guess the moral of this story, because I'm not getting to my dogma stuff again, is like, if you're going to screw me over, please do it like so behind my back that I don't really see it until it explodes in my face mainly, and then I can just see all of it at once. Uh, is that better than actually just like slow, slowly getting fucked over? I don't know the answer to that. I think I'm going to turn to the chat for that. So if you're around and inclined to give me an answer on that, the question of the day is, would you like to be getting fucked over the entire time and then not know it until it spectacularly explodes in front of you? Or would you like to just be aware that you're getting slowly fucked over so you so you can prevent the initial, or the, the, the Yosemite uh, super volcano version of it at the end? I, I don't know. So I'd be interested to see what you guys think because... I'm still trying to figure it out, because I guess I don't like either one of them, and I guess that makes me the dick. And uh, I guess that's the lesson for today, right? Like, what did we learn here in the top 20? I'm the dick. Is this the first time we've learned it? Of course not. This is for you guys. It's a little icky thumb, which I think describes this. Probably not. Who cares?